your family is your spouse. We are not talking about your mother, your father, your siblings, and all that. No, they are the extended family. But this, you know, tier two gives you permission with you and your immediate family. So that's your spouse and then your kids, your children, even if they are 10. They are all your kids and you can prove that they are your kids. You can apply for them. And you don't only need um, kids through birth. It can also be kids through adoption. It's actually anybody that depends on you for support. Welcome again to my YouTube channel. My name is Rebecca Ajman, a registered nurse from Ghana, currently living and working in England as a registered nurse. Today I'm going to talk about a health and care visa that was launched by the UK government on the 4th of August this year. And this is going to be the new route for visa application for nurses and healthcare workers who wish to work in England. It is also a tier two resident permit visa that grants visas for you and for your dependents, that's your immediate family, your spouse and your children who wish to move with you to England. If it is your first time of coming across this channel, do well to support me by subscribing. Click on the post notification bell icon, that way you wouldn't miss any time I upload videos. I always say that if you want to migrate to the United Kingdom, this is the great time and a great opportunity for you to migrate because just a week ago, the government of UK released a £28 million funds to recruit international nurses into England to help the healthcare system of the United Kingdom. So if you want to migrate, it's an opportune time for you to move with your family and to give your career a face lift okay so today i'm going to talk about the documents you need to apply for this particular kind of visa the fees you are going to pay the waiting period and what you should expect and what you should do also if you are applying with your family the documents you need for your family and what you should do for your family this has become necessary the reason we have to explain this particular process is because i'm having lots of questions from people asking about what to do and how to go about this particular kind of visa application. And also I've seen people's visas being delayed. The fact that you're a healthcare worker applying for this health and care visa doesn't mean automatically within the waiting period you should have your visa. If you don't do things the right way, it's going to cause unnecessary delay in your process. And if possible, your family can even be refused because you didn't do the right thing. So today I'm going to take time to explain the whole process to you so that you have a smooth transition. To begin with, I'll talk about the documents that you need. If you see me going back and forth, it's because I've made scripts here. I couldn't skip everything, so I'll be moving back and forth and then be telling you what to do. Um, you should first be a healthcare worker. So a nurse, a doctor, a dietitian, a physiotherapist, a nutritionist, whatever, and you have already applied to the regulatory body re respective to the field that you are coming to work for. So if you are a nurse, you have already applied with the Nursing and Medical Council here in UK that you want to come and, you know, practice and work here and you have already started your process. So I saw a WhatsApp message from a friend of mine, you know, the friend actually copied the link of the health and care visa and wrote and I read that the UK government is giving visas to healthcare workers. And this is not, um, you know, because the government is giving visas to healthcare workers, so you should just rush in and apply for the visa you are going to get. No, there are some documents that you need, even if you are a healthcare worker, to be eligible to get this particular kind of visa and the advantages that comes with it. So the documents that you need. The number one document is your IELTS or OET result, which you should pass. And I've done lots of videos. If you haven't been following me, you can go down into my playlist in my nursing videos. You can see all these things that I'm talking about. I started explaining the whole process of working, moving to the UK, the exams you need. I've spoke in depth about them. So you need your IELTS and your OET results, which you should pass. The next thing you need to do is to pass your CBT exams. That's a computer-based exams, which is, you know, um, nursing questions, 120 nursing questions. You should pass these exams and you should print the results of these exams with you when you are applying. 
you should have your decision letter from the NMC of UK and this decision letter also called the OSCE invitation is a letter that is given to you by the Necessary Military Council of UK telling you that you can now proceed to the part two of your um, test of competence or you can move into the UK to you know continue with the other phase of registration process and this exam is the OSCE exam which is basically a practical exam so the letter that is given to you stating that you are eligible to sit for this exam is called the OSCE invitation or the decision letter and you should have this exam at hand at the time of the application of your visa the next thing is the offer letter and this letter is from your employer that you are going to work with your potential employer and ways of getting this letter is by successfully passing a job interview and as i've been saying you can look for jobs you know by yourself by doing direct application that's going on track jobs or nhs jobs websites and then you search for the jobs you apply by yourself you set for the interview and if you qualify your employer is going to give you this offer letter or you can go through agencies that i have talked about in some of my previous videos and these agents are going to help you secure a job with your employer if you are successful in an interview you would be given this job offer letter not later than a week of passing your interview the next thing is your certificate of sponsorship this is also a form of letter which is just about two pages from your employer that you are going to work with stating that they are going to support you they are going to sponsor you throughout your journey or your transition from your home country into the uk so in this letter it states the salary you are going to be taking it gives you a unique number and this number you are going to use to apply for your visa and that number is very very necessary without the certificate of sponsorship you can still come to the uk but you are going to you know it's going to be very very financially involving because you have to bear your own cost and everything but with this certificate of sponsorship your employer is just stating in it that they are going to bear your cost for you they are going to pay for everything and in case you have nothing in case you have no funds in your bank account you don't need to prove any you know bank statement during the time of application because they are going to support you with your family they are going to give you the initial monies you need and then they're going to also help you to settle in the UK. And this letter mostly comes within two weeks to a month. It shouldn't be more than a month of passing or being successful for an interview. You should have the certificate of sponsorship, you know, letter or form. The next thing you have to have is your tuberculosis certificate. And this certificate currently costs about $120. And you can get them from the IM Center in any country that you are. I know that in Ghana, it's at um, Roman Ridge near the jack and joe school inside the airport residential area so you go there before you go you have to book online so you can go online and then you look for their address you book or i will leave their email in the description box below you book for a space and then they give you a date you go in and then you take your chest x-ray you do some other things and if you are free of tuberculosis they give you a yellow paper as i'm showing here and this paper you know states that you are free of tuberculosis and you need this particular certificate before you can apply for a visa the next thing you need is your police clearance or your police certificate form which you can get from any cid headquarters in your home country stating that you have no criminal record whatsoever you have never committed any offense and you are clear to travel outside of the country and both the tuberculosis certificate and the police report are valid for six months so you should do it I recommend that you do it after you have been successful in your job interview or after you've gotten your job interview or your offer letter you just go and do this so that it doesn't expire because people some people do it earlier it ends up expiring and then you have to redo it again because if it expires you can never use it for a successful application so you have to bear that in mind you also need your eligibility for health and care visa letter and you know some people apply without this letter and they are still successful in the application but it's you know it's something that is new because if you are using this kind of visa route the ukvi or the home office ask you that have you confirmed with your um, employer whether you are eligible to use this particular kind of visa and so your employer have to give you a letter which we call the eligibility for health and care visa letter 
introducing you as their new nurse, stating your name, your certificate of sponsorship number, the time that you are going to start work with them, your role and your salary that you are going to receive with them. And with this letter, they are going to tell them that yes, they have confirmed and then you are eligible to use the health and care visa route. So if your employer gives you this letter, it means you are not supposed to, you know, prove any bank account details. However, if you still want to add your bank account details or your bank statement, as we call it, you can use it or you can attach it to your application. The other thing you need is your application form, which I'll be showing a sample on the screen like this, which you will get when you go to the UKVI's website, you go to the health and care visa page. I'll be leaving the link in the description box. So you go there, you fill out your details, you start by your name, your date of birth, any relevant information, you just follow the format and you answer the questions accordingly. At a point, you insert your certificate of sponsorship number, your address in the UK, where you are, you'll be living, which will be in your certificate of sponsorship. Whether or not you are going to travel with your family, you provide all these details. If you are going to travel with your family, like your spouse and your children, you state that, yes, you are going to travel either together with them or they will come after you. You have to state it. And it's always advisable to first come alone because you are coming to a new environment, you're coming to a new space, you don't know what to expect. You are, there are still a lot of things that you have to learn. You have to cope, learn and unlearn. You have to adjust to the environment. You have to know around. So most people advise you to come alone initially or if possible, come with your spouse first. You settle and then later, if you have kids, they can join you. But mind you, if you are coming with your family or you are coming with your spouse, you should know that your employer is not going to bear the cost for your family in most cases. In most cases, your employer is going to bear your cost alone or the agent you are going to work with is going to bear your cost alone. And this cost involves the visa fee. They are going to pay for you alone. They are going to pay for your flight ticket into the United Kingdom alone. They are going to provide accommodation for you. Some provide one month accommodation. Some provide two months. Some provide three months. The maximum is three months of free accommodation where you have everything for free, you use Wi-Fi for free, you sleep for free, you, you like you bath for free, you do <laughs> you do everything basically for free for up to three months. By which time you are still receiving salary, and after that, you will be classified as being independent because after that, you would have passed your OSCE examination and you would have been independent to either look for a space or to move out. Of the accommodation that is provided for you so it's advisable to come alone secure a place get used to the environment and all that then later your family can join you so you print out this application form and attach it to all these documents that i have mentioned you also print a copy of the receipt of the visa application payment which i'm going to talk about the price and all that pretty soon you print out this receipt also and then you attach it to your document to the visa application center. So on the portal, after you've successfully done your application, you'll be asked to select an appointment date, which you can select any day that you want to, you know, select or any day that you think you, should, you can move. But you should do so very early, as early as possible to avoid any unnecessary delays. And also bear in mind that this particular kind of visa, the duration is 15 working days which is approximately three weeks. You should get your visa decision within those three weeks. Sometimes some people have theirs very earlier. Some have theirs as early as nine, 10 days. Their visas are already out. But I advise that you do so early. You apply for visa and you book your appointment early so that you can secure a space and get your visa to travel within the date that is stated, you know, or before the date that you are stated to resume work. If you do not get an appointment date that is so close to, you know, receiving your visa before your arrival date, you can do something we call the walk-in service, which you can just walk in and then you pay an extra fee of about $150 to get, you know, to do your application on that very same day that you walked in. So that comes with a fee. But if you are booking an appointment, you don't pay for anything. If you are doing a walk-in, you pay for about $150 in addition to your visa fee. So now I'm going to talk about the fees that you need to pay. The visa fee for this particular kind of visa, health and care visa, has been reduced. 
drastically by the UK government. So currently you need to pay just $316 for this particular kind of visa. And you know, the government has done so well. The government actually needs you, people like you. They need your expertise. They need your experience. They need your knowledge to help their national health service or their care homes, you know, to move forward. So they've re reduced the visa fee for you. You are now going to pay $316 only. And the good news about this particular kind of visa is that you do not have to pay for the immigration health surcharge. Oh my God, this is good news. You don't have to pay for the immigration health surcharge, also called the IHS fee. I think I've done some videos on that. This IHS fee used to be £1,200 per person. And initially, you needed to pay this money as part of your visa application fee before your visa can be guaranteed or before your visa can be issued. But now, because you are very relevant and you are needed post-COVID, you don't need to pay for this IHS fee of £1,200. It has just been taken off by the UK government for you and for your family. So not for only you. You are not going to pay for this money. Your family is also not going to pay for this money. So you just pay for your visa application fee of $316. And if you are going through an agent, it is the agent who is going to pay for the visa application fee for you. So you don't pay anything at all. Yours is to just fill the form and submit your document, walk in and do your application, and then you walk out. When your visa is ready, you go take it and then you move to the UK. Most of the agents also pay for your flight ticket to the UK. But if you are doing a direct application where you have to pay for the visa and the ticket for your own, bear in mind that your employer refunds to you immediately you move or you arrive into UK. So bear in mind that you lose nothing at all. If you even used your money to pay for this visa and ticket fee, it is definitely going to be refunded to you by your employer. So that is that for you, for you, the main applicant applying for this particular kind of visa route. If you are moving to your, with your family, now I'm going to talk about the family. If you are applying for your family, all these things that I've said literally applies to your family or your dependents and your family is your spouse. We are not talking about your mother, your father, your siblings and all that. No, they are the extended family. But this, you know, tier two gives you permission with you and your immediate family. So that's your spouse and then your kids, your children, even if they are 10, they are all your kids and you can prove that they are your kids. You can apply for them. And you don't only need um, kids through birth. It can also be kids through adoption. It's actually anybody that depends on you for support or anybody that you are actually taking care of so maybe you have a child who is not yours who doesn't bear your name but you have an adoption certificate to show that this child actually depends on you for support and all these dependents that are the children have to be below 18 years if they are above 18 years they are considered as adults and they cannot apply with you so they have to be below the ages of 18 years and you can prove that they are yours through um, certificates by birth or through adoption. So if you are applying for your family, they are also going to pay $316 for the visa application. And mind you, they are not, their visa application is not going to be paid for by your employer or by the agent. The cost is going to be bared by themselves or by you, the applicant. So bear that in mind. Lots of people ask whether it's the agent that is going to pay for the visa application for their family or is their employer. No, no, none of them is going to pay for you. You have to pay for it by yourself or the dependents have to pay for it by themselves. So if it's your spouse, your spouse has to pay for it or you pay for your spouse. If you're the children, of course, your children are not working, you don't have money, so it means you have to pay for your children. That's why it's most advisable that you come first, you settle down, you get some kind of cash and some kind of support. You settle, you get an apartment that can accommodate all these people. If you should get good schools for them around your vicinity or around your location before you can bring them so that they will not be a burden to you or they will not be a kind of a distraction for the work. I mind you here, work is work. If we say 7 a.m. is 7 a.m. If we say 6 a.m. is 6 a.m. It's not 6.15. It's not 6.20. If it's 7 a.m., you even have to be there around 6. Latest by 6.50, you have to clock in, change, and do all those necessary things. 
into your uniform or into your scrubs before you know when it begins. So that is it. You need your certificate of sponsorship number and your GWF number to apply for your relatives. So after you have applied for your application, you will see a number called the GWF number. You insert that number into your, your dependent's application as well. You'll be asked to insert your number into your dependent's application as well so that they can link the two of you or the family and know that you are one unit that are traveling. They'll also ask you whether the family is traveling with you, after you, or before you. So that once you state it anyhow you want it. And you have to provide a proof of relationship. A proof of relationship is like if it's you, are, you are bringing your spouse, you have to provide your marriage certificate, which is um, a legal document showing that you are legally married together or you are legally in partnership with the person. So you can go to the a local council of your country and then you do this if it's like a formal marriage you have done you get the certificate from them and then you can use this certificate you can also add pictures of your ceremony or pictures of you know your relationship like maybe some trips that you had together some fun activities a domestic activity that you did together like they want to see the two of you if it's kids they want to see you and the kids together taking pictures so i'll be showing some in the screens of my kids and i that we took so these are some examples of you know pictures that can prove your relationship with these people and they also have to wait for the same period that you are going to wait and they are also not going to pay for the immigration health charge actually this kind of visa is superb it's so superb because it cuts down lots of costs for you and it also singles you out of the lots of applications that are on the tables of the UKVI. Because you are a healthcare worker, they know that your service is so much necessary, is so much relevant. So they want to provide a fast track kind of application for you. That is why this kind of visa was introduced post pandemic so that healthcare workers will not have to be stranded when they want to migrate or when they want to bring their families. So I think that's the end of this video. If you think you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Support me by commenting, by subscribing, by turning on your post notification bell icon. I love to read comments. If you think you have any question, come back to me by email that I'll be leaving in the description box. If you think you still need any questions, do come back to me. As I said, my name remains Rebecca Ajiman and I'm your nurse in the journey straight to the top. See ya!